previously on Dungeons and Dragons. Having mercilessly killed everyone, our heroes regrouped at the top of the lighthouse. Now that they have a chance to take a break, our heroes finally took a look at the note Alura found. It was some kind of encoded message. In the room, there were several other encoded messages with suspiciously different numbers of red lines. As they tried to figure out what the numbers meant, Thwamp arrived. He informed our heroes that the soldiers had managed to defeat all the pirates while he diligently watched. Our heroes proceeded to spend the next 30 minutes decoding the message. They eventually figured out that it was the pirates trying to call for help. After that, our heroes went down to the bedroom and found a large safe. Inside, they found a ton of gold and also a mysterious locket. They also found the key cipher for decoding the secret message they spent 30 minutes decoding. Having completely cleaned out the tower, our heroes headed back down. They eventually decided to go help Bram and the others take the east and north batteries if they needed help. Our heroes arrived right in the middle of the raging battle. Guy and the others had already managed to take the east battery. Bram, Scrag, and a few other soldiers were currently fighting their way towards the north battery. Without hesitation, our heroes began their sneak attack. Alura went to assist Bram and Scrag and Sacred Flame somehow worked twice in a row again. The others started making their advance towards the North Battery. Chad ran ahead and eviscerated some pirates and stole all of Thwamp's kills. Bullant meanwhile began redecorating as he pinned new ornaments to the walls. Duke meanwhile began sniping the pirates manning the cannons and ballistas. Thwamp being unable to recite his killing poetry decided to power up Chad instead. This is when all of a sudden Alura caught a whiff of the smell of someone being low on health. The stench was coming from Chad. Unfortunately everyone forgot that Chad is the fastest creature in the universe. Meanwhile, Bullant didn't even need to attack the pirates anymore as they started to jump to their death in the sad plane to get away from him. It was around this time where Bram and the others caught up. They passed by to help fight off the pirates while complimenting Duke on his new chair. One of the pirates proved to be a challenge surprisingly. Our heroes encountered and surrounded yet another ex-boy who was just as tough as the others. However, after a few arrows to the spine, he eventually went down. However, our heroes were held up for long enough for the archers above to raise down some arrows at Chad. Alura began to cackle maniacally in the distance. The cackles of Alura were interrupted by loud monkey noises when Sebo fired Cappuccino out of a cannon. Cappuccino made a direct hit on the North Battery obliterating several of the pirates. After that, Chad threw the pirate that was in his way over the top rope and he plunged into the set plane below. Chad then continued to run away from Alura. Meanwhile, Duke was continuing his attempt to take out the cannons and ballistas and was once again proving just how good a shot he is by almost hitting Bullant as he moved towards the battery. After recovering from the reminder of what he has to deal with, Bullant reached the corner where Chad and Thwomp had chased a pirate. Chad charades to Bullant to shoot him from around the corner. This trick shot called for Bullant's secret ancient technique, the fabled triple disadvantage shot. It went about as well as you'd expect. It was around this time when Sebo fired his cannon again. Our heroes were reminded that Sebao is a god among men as he completely obliterated the cliff face and sent everyone standing on it plummeting into the set plane below. Meanwhile, Duke began yet another sniping battle where neither party could manage to hit each other with a pirate up in the north battery. Meanwhile, Thomp managed to corner the pirate who was attempting to flee. Thomp gave him a choice. He would spare his life if he could demonstrate his skills and provide a rhyme or the word pineapple. Little did Thwomp know that this pirate was a master of wordplay and easily passed his test. Thwomp allowed him to surrender and he continued his way up the path. He eventually encountered a completely original and legally distinct pirate on top of the battery wall. Thwomp began throwing down some sick rhymes to attack the man. However, it turns out most of the pirates are master wordsmiths as the two poets began a rap battle. Meanwhile, Chad sprinted up into the battery and warned the pirate on the cannon to not fire the cannon. The pirate slowly lit the wick while looking directly into Chad's eyes. While Chad was distracted, the pirate behind him farted in his general direction and Chad took massive damage. Halura could not be more pleased. 
Meanwhile, it turns out that Gomp never tied up the pirate that he allowed to surrender as he wiggled out of his clothes and bolted toward the lighthouse with Bram and Scrag in pursuit. Meanwhile, Chad followed through with his threat as he shoved the pirate into the cannon and shot him to his doom. Meanwhile, Bullant ran up and stole one last kill from Thwomp. All that remained of the pirates in his area was the guy Duke had been failing to hit. Knowing he had lost, the pirate ran off the cliff to be one with a sad plane below. Thwomp being the good guy he has decided to give the pirate another chance and saved him with Featherfall. However, as he slowly fell through the air, he no longer had any cover from the people who wanted him dead. With the final pirate in the area defeated, our heroes successfully captured the East and North Batteries.